Hey, we're going to do communion now, so if you need to get your stuff, I, I just want to share real quick. I'm not going to do the communion. This is what I love about our family. When a man comes up to me and says, can I do the communion message this morning? I'm like, absolutely. So go ahead and get your elements ready, and I'll turn it over to Jim. Thank you. Um, well, God's asking me to step out of my comfort zone this morning, so bear with me. Um, and this is more than just communion. It's kind of a praise report um, for me. But when we think of communion, you know, we always think of uh, the sacrifice. And uh, that Jesus made for us on the cross and uh, the eternal life that follows. But uh, I wanted to focus on the bread this morning. Um, I've had a problem with my elbow for a while, and uh, as we were in the praise this morning, I kind of noticed, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with it now. So it wasn't real bad, but it was annoying, and uh, I've been praying for healing, and when I take communion, when we break the bread, that re represents Jesus' broken body, and by his stripes, we are healed. So if you don't do that while you're taking the, the bread, just remember that it has to do with healing, healing your spirit as well as your body. So as we take the bread, Jesus said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take and eat. And in a like manner, he poured out the cup said, this is my blood that was shed for you on the cross. Take and drink. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for helping us place our trust in you. You know, things happen and sometimes they don't happen in our time frame, but Lord, we, we just uh, place them in your hands and continue to pray lift them up to you, and we just give you thanks for all the things that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that was confirmation for me. Um, during that last song, I felt like I was supposed to share about healing, and Jim, Jim said he'd been praying for healing, and then the, he was healed this morning, and the trust without borders and the faith, um, I developed a cough the last week of school, so the end of May, and, and all Corey's video game buddies can tell you I've had a cough all summer, because they were like, well, there's Michelle, um, and it would wake me up, and Corey was like, you need to go to the doctor, and I actually did go to the doctor, um, like a week after school was out, they gave me uh, an antibiotic, cough medicine, it didn't go away, didn't get any better, and I kept coughing, and he kept saying you need to go to the doctor, but I was getting really nervous, and there was a Sunday in July, mid-July, Corey said, put your hands on your body. I feel like the Lord wants to heal, um, heal you. And I've been praying almost every day for healing. And so I um, put my hands on my chest and I prayed, and that was a Sunday. And then we went out of town with Hudson and Chelsea and our granddaughter on that Tuesday morning. And I didn't give it another thought, but it was Thursday, I think it was Thursday that night when I went to go to bed, I said, I haven't coughed all day. And I had coughed every day, all day, through the night, since the end of May. And so I, the Lord healed me, and I haven't coughed since, other than just like a normal, you know, cough. And so um, trust without borders, faith, don't stop believing. I don't know why he didn't heal me at the end of May. I was praying all the time. But it was that moment when Corey did that, and I was like, oh, I have prayed this prayer so much. But I was like, I'll do it again. And so don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. If there's something that you're asking the Lord, don't get discouraged. I don't know why he heals some people, like Jim, right now in, in the service. Um, but he is a healer. He is our healer. And so if you have something, don't stop praying for that. That's good. The Lord shared a word with me a couple weeks ago. Um, it was just one word, and the word was contend. Contend. And it was issued as a challenge for me 
not that I would contend to see the result that I expected or that I wanted, but it's the wrestling with, it's the wrestling with, right? Like Jacob wrestled the angel. And I, he dropped that word in my spirit, to contend. There are seasons where the Lord calls you to contend. And I believe that we're in a season like that right now where he's calling the church, he's calling you as individuals and us collectively as a body to contend for the things that he said will be for his will in our lives, for his will in our community. And so I would just challenge you with that this morning that it's not, it's not unto our expected outcome, but unto his will that we contend in the spirit. So thank you, Jesus, for the courage and boldness to contend, to stand in a place and to stay in that ground, to hold that ground. God, we thank you for your character, that you are good and that you're faithful, that as we're standing and as we're wrestling, you're, you've not walked away. And I just wanna speak that over you this morning. In the place that you're standing where you're wrestling, Jesus has not walked away from you. He is standing with you in that place, even as you wrestle, even as you contend, he's standing in that place with you. Jesus. Thank you for your goodness, Father. Thank you, Jesus. God, we just say we love you and we trust you. And we ask you to release your goodness in the room this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to the person next to you and say he's good. He is good. That person on the other side, he's good. Amen, amen. Hey, guys, welcome to church. Thank you for being here this morning. We're so excited to see your faces in the room. It's so good to worship as a family, amen? Amen. Hold on, let me grab my phone here. I, if Listen, if I don't write it down, I will forget. So i got to get my announcements. Okay, we got a couple announcements this morning. So Hope Fest is this coming Saturday, right, the 19th. And where? Deer Run. Hope Fest is this Saturday at Deer Run. So if you want to come and hang out, if you want to participate with a booth or something like that, then talk to Corey or I, um, and we can get you hooked up there. We'd love to see your face there. Um, we do have another round of Rewoven that's going to be starting soon. Raise your hand if you have taken Rewoven already. Yeah, raise your hand if it was like a life changer for you. <laughs> yeah. So good. Praise the Lord. Um, so we're, we've got another round coming up pretty soon. And so if you would like more information about taking that class, we talk a lot about inner healing, um, unbinding lies and walking in freedom and all of that good stuff. And so if you'd like to take that class, talk to me or Corey. We'd love to get you connected there. And then I'm going to let Jasmine come and do this one. Come on, girl. So we, we did Family Sunday last week, but we forgot a little something. Um, we forgot to do the love donation. My bad. Totally forgot. Um, so next week we're going to do that, but we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to prepare yourselves, prepare your minds, prepare your finances to give that donation. It is going to go towards a couple families in our congregation that we just want to support this school year in getting school supplies and clothes and things like that. So if you love people and you want to give money to them, think about doing that. Okay. Amen. <laughs> so at youth group, when I say, oh, we got to release the kids, that's what that clap was for, wasn't it? Hey, we need to release the kids. If you haven't been released yet, kiddos, you can take off. Jasmine is standing back there. She can help you get to where you need to go. It's good stuff. I have this thing at youth group that when I do a prayer and I close with amen, we do two claps at the end. And it's taken us a few months to get everybody on tempo. But we've, we're just, we have two that miss it every now and then. But we're getting everybody there. So maybe we'll start doing that here. No, we won't. We definitely won't. 
Hey, what an honor it is to have Miss Eva with us today and some of her family with us today. We had a hard day yesterday. We have some beautiful flowers here from uh, Frank's ceremony. It was an honor to, to be a part of that. And uh, it was hard. It was tough. Um, but I know that Frank was uh, celebrating in heaven today. And uh, he was celebrating in a way that we only get to imagine or dream about. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to carry on and we're going to do some teaching today. Uh, let's pray. Father, I just ask right now that you would release your words through me. Father, that I would honor you with only doing what you asked me to do and not doing what I want to do. Help me teach. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I was waiting for the claps. You guys didn't do it. That's okay. It's all right. That's all right. All right. Hey, so let's do a quick review. Uh, Two weeks ago when I was in the pulpit and I was teaching on the results of hearing God's voice. We've we're, we're spending some time about hearing God's voice. I, I really want to teach. I felt the Lord said, let's teach them about hearing my voice. Let's, let's give them some very practical application, very applicable, easy things to do so that they uh, begin. But I need to convince you how important it is to hear the voice of God. And so I'm going to... Um, kind of just recap real quick, which is my main point last week was, is that the result of hearing God's voice voice, is you get faith, right? It's where your faith is increased. It's where faith comes from. And I, I really, I focused on Romans 10, 17, which is so faith comes from hearing and hearing from or by the word of Christ. So faith comes from hearing. So first... I pointed out that faith comes, which means if you don't have it, you can get it. You can, it can come to you, right? That you don't need to go on in life without it. Secondly, I said it comes from hearing, your physical ear and your spiritual ear, your heart, right? And thirdly, that it comes from hearing the rhema word of God, right? That spoken word, the living word, the the life quickened word, um, the the word that is quickened by the Holy Spirit, and I also unpacked two Greek words for the term word in the New Testament. The first one was logos, right, which is a divine, eternal, unchanging counsel of God. It's it's the word that's settled forever in heaven, and no human mind can fully apprehend. Right, just as a reminder. And then the second word was rhema. And that's a word that's spoken by God to us individually and personally. It's quickened by the Holy Spirit. Um, it brings the part of logos alive, right? It, it, it extends the total counsel of God from his logos into the rhema into us. And that we needed it, it's, it's a word that we need at any given moment and it comes down to us and makes it very personal and makes it very vivid. Right? So faith comes by hearing. So I just want to recap that, right? Faith comes by hearing. It's a personal word of God. It's a word spoken maybe by a human voice through the Holy Spirit. And today I want to focus on the second result of hearing the voice of God. The second result is a distinctive lifestyle. People who hear God's voice live a life that's different from every other people, every other person. Like you cannot be the same. When you are hearing God's voice, you cannot be the same and you will be in, you will live, you will function, you will operate in a very distinctive lifestyle. And I'm, I'm going to unpack some of that lifestyle, but um, let's look at Scripture, Matthew 4.4. 4. If you, you want to read along, um, you, you're more than welcome to. But Matthew 4.4 4 is where we find Jesus and Satan are having this conversation. And Satan, right, has been tempting, and now Jesus has given him his answer, his rebuttal 
to the whole point of that you could turn stones into bread. So let's read Matthew 4, 4. I do use the, I, I'm using the ESV right now, right? Jesus in this text is using the word rhema. I used it a couple, I used this text a couple weeks ago. I want to revisit it. This is Jesus, but he answered, this is Jesus answering, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone or by every word that comes or proceeds, that, that some translations will say proceeds from the mouth of God. Every rhema that proceeds, every rhema word, every word of God that proceeds or comes out of the mouth of God. The verb proceeds, right? We use the word come, the, the word uh, comes out of his mouth. When we use that word, the, the translation that we often use loses a little bit of its functionality. And so I want to really, I want to change it to the proceeds, which is, is an understanding that is a continuing present tense. Proceeds continuing present tense to happen. So every word can, that comes from the Lord continues to happen. It's not that he spoke it once and then it's done. He is continuing to speak to you individually, personally, through his rhema word that is bound to the Logos word. Right, so a couple weeks back, or a few weeks back, I was talking about um, that his word is always present. So personal direct relationship with God means his word to you is not past, it's not future, but it's here and now in the present. Right? It's happening again and again. And so in this passage, what we have is Jesus is comparing physical bread with rhema or with spiritual bread. And he said, man doesn't live by bread alone, physical bread, but he lives by every word, spiritual bread, that proceeds, that continues to come out of the mouth of the Lord. And so let's look at that. Natural bread feeds the body, right? Natural bread uh, is, is what it does is it feeds your it feeds your outer body. And this rhema word, the spiritual bread, feeds the inner man. Feeds your inner soul, your inner, I mean, your inner spirit. It nourishes your spirit. And the reality is, is that we need both. We need spiritual bread and we need physical bread. We need, we need physical bread to keep our body alive. We actually need spiritual bread. We need that rhema word to keep our spirit man alive. All right? It keeps our spirit alive and healthy. So, the bread, the rhema bread, comes only through the Holy Spirit. I said this last week. I'm going to probably say it. I'm, I want to keep reminding you, right? I don't, have, I don't have my physical Bible on me. Someone has a physical Bible. Hold it up real quick. All right, right there. You don't need a signal to, to turn that in, all right? That doesn't speak to you. It can, it can, you can read it, and it can speak to you in that format, but it doesn't physically take the, the black and the red marks and audibly speak to you. Now, some of you are going to be like, well, my app does. Well, yeah, okay, that's technology. But the reality is for those to come off the paper, to come alive, that only comes from the Holy Spirit. It's, it's the only way that it happens. So that powers the Holy Spirit that will turn those marks that we read to come alive and speak to us, that speaks into our spirit. Okay, And it's that, again, I'm going to repeat, it's that word that comes alive that it's in any given situation, any given moment that we need right then. And we were talking earlier 
about the timing and how um, that maybe you've been praying for something, you've been asking for something, you've been praying into something, you're, you're looking, seeking for an answer for something, and it, it hasn't happened, and you're saying, well, I needed it right then. But again, we have to trust the timing of the Lord and that when it happens, it will be the right time. It will be in the right way. I, I want to, um, earlier, when, when my wife was sharing about her healing, I'm sure there was someone who was like, well, Corey's a pastor. Why did he just lay hands on her and pray for her? Honestly, in my prayer time, and I'm like, well, I'm the husband. I'm the head of this household. I should go lay hands on her. And he said, I don't need you to lay hands on her. I've got this. Now, that sounds like I wasn't being a good husband, but I was listening to the Holy Spirit and allowing him. And so your question would be like, maybe your words, well, why did you tell her to go to the doctor? Honestly, because I was planning on if she went to the doctor, got some kind of report, and then he healed her, we'd have some kind of like evidence to back it up because I knew the healing was coming. But there are times when we need to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and don't just do religious acts. Because I could have easily said, well, I'll lay hands on you and pray for you and then just let it be. You need to be hearing the voice of the God. That doesn't mean I didn't care about it. It doesn't mean you don't care about people. It doesn't mean that, that you're not going to operate in faith and do these things. But there are moments when the Lord's going to say, I want you to go pray. I want you to go lay hands. I want you to do this. And when you're hearing it, you'll go do it. And there's other times when you say, I don't want you to put your hand on that. I've got this. And w when I say that, it reminds me of the moment when they were moving the ark Right? And David was watching, and, the, and it stumbled a little bit or appeared to stumble a little bit, and the two guys put their hands on it, and it died instantly. Now, I say that. I wasn't afraid to put my hands on Michelle and pray for her like I was going to die. Okay? But I'm saying what it was is it was a moment was like, hey, I want to interject and do what I think I'm supposed to do. And God said, I don't need you to do that. I'm not telling you to do that right now. That's how we need to be in tune. That's how we need to hear. That's the, that's the importance and the, the power of being in the moment and letting him talk to you in the moment. In the moment has impact for the future. In the moment brings clarity to the past. All right, so the Holy Spirit is the one that speaks this. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that does this. In Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, 14. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Now, sons and daughters, okay? Every time I say sons, just know I'm saying sons and daughters. I want to clarify it every time. You've got to understand context of when this was being written and who, who he was speaking to, who was going to carry the word back to the, the women and the children, okay? So, Romans 8, 14, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So, question is, what makes us sons and daughters of God? Thank you, Doug. It wasn't a trick question, be led by the Spirit. So, what makes us sons and daughters of God? <laughs> Cloud, this is crowd participation, come on. See, this is why I have to keep, this is why we're going to stay here because I need you to under, I need you to believe the power in being led by the Holy Spirit. I, I need you to have the ownership in this. When I'm, when I'm with kids, especially with our youth group and stuff like that, and what I'm, I'm speaking into them, what I'm sharing with them is, is to grow them so that they're not riding on the, the, the parents' uh, relationship with God that they develop their own. And I need to make sure that you guys are not riding on my coattails of what I bring in, but you are establishing and walking in your relationship with the Father and that you trust him and that you know that you know when you hear. Thank you. Okay? And I think that that's hard for the church because we are very used to and accustomed to what we've done for a long time, which is just give me a good word, kind of make me feel good. Don't challenge me too much, but give me a little bit of a challenge. Encourage me, send me back out, and hope I make it to the next weekend. 
And that's not living. That's not the life that God called us to. That's not John 10, 10 life. That's not life abundant, okay? And so, so there are many different ways to which we hear the Holy Spirit work in our life. There are many, lots of ways, but I, I'm going to focus on two just very quickly, okay? The first one is this understanding that when you get saved, when you get saved, I got to think about how I want to say this. When you get saved, you are born of the Spirit. You are a baby Christian, okay? The things of God are new. There's a, there's a difference between being born of the Holy Spirit and then being baptized by the Holy Spirit. I just want to clarify that. Okay, I'm not talking about baptism. I'm talking about when you get saved, you're born of the Holy Spirit, the things of Christianity, the things of God, you are a baby. All right? Okay? And, and we see this because in 1 Peter, this is what Peter, he said, as newborn babies desire pure milk of the word, okay, that's the logos word. We're being fed that, that milk that nourishes us. We're getting into the word. You've just gotten saved. You're a baby. You're like, I don't know how to walk. I don't know how to carry out the word. I don't know how to hear the Holy Spirit. I don't know how to hear the voice of God. So I'm getting the word in me. I'm reading the word. I'm getting it into my heart. I'm feeling it in my brain. I'm getting this, the nourishment from it, and, I'm, and that's all I know to do. That's all I know. I'm a baby. Okay? I'm a baby. But that process doesn't make you mature. It, it doesn't make you a mature believer. It doesn't make you a, a, a mature follower, a, a son or daughter of God as a mature operating in, your, in that. Okay? So I know your question was, well, then how do we mature? How do I grow up? Oh, good. I'm glad you asked that. I'm going to tell you because it could only be done. It's only by being led by the Holy Spirit. It's what First Peter, what Peter was saying in his first epistle, what he was getting at was, is this is where you are, and everybody wants to be here because it's comfortable. It's easy. Now you can just stay there and just do that, and it's, it's good. You're good. You're going to heaven. It's, it's, it's safe. But if you want to become a mature son and daughter of the Father, and you want to mature into the things, you're going to have to be led by the Holy Spirit. And the only way you can be led by the Holy Spirit is by the Holy One, by the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be because I want to give you the voice of the Lord. I want to, I want to speak into you and grow you into these things. Okay. That is how we mature. And the, thing, and, and the thing about it is, is that our spiritual maturity matches our physical maturity because it never stops. It's always continuing. Right? If, if you hear someone, if you ever hear me say from here, I've got it all figured out and just walk out the door. I'm being serious. <laughs> Because I don't, and I won't. God is always going to be teaching me things uh, from his word. The Holy Spirit is always going to be giving me new revelation of the things he wants to do in my daily life. And that is true in our physical world, right? If you ever hear someone say they've got it all figured out, you and I know they don't have it all figured out, especially if they're like a certain age, 17, and you're 57. I'm not, but... And you're like, kids, you have no clue. And I feel like sometimes I've been in those situations, and I walked away, and I felt the Holy Spirit go, that's what I want to say to you sometimes, but I don't, because my grace and mercy is so much greater than that. Because we come to church again and again and again, and we do the routines, we do the, the cycle of it, and we're like, I've heard, this, I've heard a message like this before. We've done these songs before. I've, we've... we've We've done this kind of topic before. I don't know, whatever it is, right? Heard it, done it, seen it. Bought the shirt last year. 
And the reality is maturing in the Spirit, maturing in your Christianity, maturing in your growth is going to be a continuing nonstop thing as long as you pursue it and as long as you give an open door for the Holy Spirit to be speaking to you so that he can grow you. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not interested in you being a baby forever. Okay, can I just say that with the utmost love? Uh, some, there are some in this room that are in the phase of life where they are dealing with babies. It is tiring. And I mean that with the utmost love. Please hear me, right? When you're making that bottle at 3 a.m. and you've had like an hour of sleep, there is this unconditional love that you have for that child, and yet you are like, you are desiring the moment that they mature enough that they sleep through the whole night and don't need a bottle of milk, and I'm telling you, God is desperate for his children to get off the milk and to mature into what you are called to be and do. And that's why we're covering this. That's why it's important that you understand. Don't just, don't just, yeah, we're covering. We're just talking about hearing the voice of God. I want you to get it inside of you and go, I want to hear the voice of God. And some of you are like, I do. I'm saying that every day, and I don't know how. That's what we're unpacking. We're unpacking these things, okay? We're going to get there. All right. Um, let me think about this for a second. Oh, yeah. The, when, uh, when I was talking about the word proceeding, proceeds, that continually, that ongoing, right? That's why, that's why coming to church once a week and getting a little bit of the word is not enough for you to mature, okay? Or going to youth group or going to a Bible study or going to small group. You need this every single day. That's why it, the continually maturing is a daily process. And I want you to get the mental picture is every, okay, um, let's say it this way. Every day you age another day. And for some of you, you're like, I know and I dread that. I hate that. I keep getting older and older. Embrace it from the standpoint of every day that I am getting a day older is another day I'm maturing spiritually. Now, if you're not maturing spiritually, all you have is the flesh side, and that's why you're, like, discontent and going, time has passed by, 20 years have gone by, and here I am. I'm still right here. So see the physical and the spiritual side. Every, you got to look at it. You wake up in the morning and go, I am another day older. It's another day for me to gain spiritual maturity. Lord, what do you want to do? What do you want to teach me today? What do you want to speak to me today? You cannot save it for Sunday morning or whatever night it is or whatever it is. You cannot save it for one day or a couple days a week. All right? And what Jesus is pointing, what he's getting us to understand is Matthew is that we need daily bread. Okay? That's what Jesus is saying to you. You need, yes, I'm hungry. I'm fasting right now. I'm doing, I am in whatever day number it is, yes, I would love to have some spiritual bread because my body actually desires and wants bread every single day. It needs it. But what he was saying is as much as you need your daily bread, you need your daily bread, the Word of God. I was, there's, a, there's a little, um, a lot of churches have the little pack, a little pamphlet. It's called the daily bread. And it's like a daily devotion. I love that. Because they, they got it. They understood. Hey, hey, Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, you need bread daily. Okay? So, if we need daily bread in our daily life, we have to hear the voice of the Lord every single day. We need to be in the Word 
and then we need to hear his word. You cannot save getting in your word for just a couple times a day. And, and I will challenge you, like, if you do a daily devotion and it's simply the just say, you got the check mark, stop. You got to change the mindset. You've got to go with, what do you want to teach me in your word today? Okay. So, uh, a little prayer that I do. I'm just going to share a little thing that I do with you. You can use it. I would encourage you to use it. Is every morning and then all throughout the day, I have a very simple prayer. Lord, put me in the right place at the right time. Super simple. Put me in the right place at the right time. The reason why I say it that way is because I can have an objective and a directive for the day and say, this is what I want to do. Lord, will you open the door for me to do this? And what I really say is, is Lord, will you put me in the right place? Will you open the door? And will you put me in the door at the right time so I can encounter and do what you are asking me to do? Which means I have to listen for his voice throughout the day rather than look for a sign. Do you hear what I'm saying? We spend a lot of time looking for signs. Jesus had a lot to say about people looking for signs and wonders, okay? Signs and wonders we should see, but I'm, look, I'm not looking for something to turn red in front of me. Or There are moments when the Lord says, you're going to see someone in a red shirt, and when you do, they're gonna, you're going to pray for them. I've heard people say and do that. Okay, I don't operate that way. How the Lord operates with me is I say, I willingly say, I have to put my heart in a position to say, I'm willfully wanting to do what you want me to do today. And I'm going to keep it very simple. Right place at the right time. All right? Because here's the reason why I say it that way. We live in a day of technology where communicating with people is super easy. Quick text, quick message, whatever, email, call someone. But there are people all around me and all around you that I can't communicate. I don't know how to communicate with them. And the Lord knows their needs. And in order for what he really wants us to be available for is to utilize us to carry out his love and that he sees someone. Right? And in order to make, my, I can, I, to make myself available to that, I have to be able to say, you're communicating with the people. I can't. Right? I mean, you can text someone and say, hey, I have, a, I have something going on today. Will you pray for me? Boom, done. But what about the moment when you don't know how to communicate with someone and you walk into their presence and if you're not training and tuning your mind in to say, in your heart, to say, Lord, speak to me. I want to hear your voice today because you have people that you know and you're communicating with them. You know their needs. You know what they need to hear. And so that, that prayer is my solution to the problem of not knowing how to communicate or connecting with everybody, all right? It's my solution to how to be at the right place at the right time. Is it, am I always at the right place or time? I don't know. The Lord does. I believe that I am. But here's what I can tell you. With that prayer comes the mindset to be able to say, um, man, we live in such a digital world that we are so disconnected from people, right? But there have been times um, where I needed to go to the bank. And even times when Michelle will say, hey, did you go to the bank? And I'm like, no, I didn't. And I needed to, but I felt like I wasn't supposed to. And maybe a couple days go by, and I feel like today's the day I'm going to go to the bank. And I get there, and I get into a conversation that only God could ordain, and it was exactly what needed to happen. It's those moments when you're um, coming home from work or going to work, now, most of the time, uh, when you guys are going to work, you didn't give yourself a whole lot of margin, so you're running late, so you don't have time to do this. But it's when you take a normal route, and the Lord says, I want you to do a different route today because I have something that you're going to. 
do. I have a different gas station I want you to go to. I have a different grocery store I want you to go to. Or, hey, don't go get groceries today. I want you to do it tomorrow. Hey, Lord, that's not, that's not convenient. Today I need to do it. He says, no, I need you to do it tomorrow. Those are the little things. We live in such a digital world. We're so disconnected from people. We forget that he, he wants to utilize our gifts that he's given us by hearing his voice and put us in a place in the moment where we carry out his love for someone. It only happens if we're hearing his voice, okay? All right. So, you know, I, was, I, I wrote down, you know, it's, it's amazing how often without planning uh, we meet the very person we need to meet at the very moment that they need us to speak to them because we're at the right place at the right time, right? And only one that can organize that is the Holy Spirit. All right? All right, so we're going to look at a very beautiful prophetic picture from Isaiah. And this this prophetic picture is the earthly life of Jesus. It's of his ministry. And really what it is, it, it really focuses on his daily relationship with the Father, ongoing daily relationship. It's a beautiful picture we're going to unpack today. And what we see is that this prophetic picture of how his ongoing daily life with the Father was is what led him to have a distinctive lifestyle, a distinctive lifestyle that we're actually supposed to have, a distinctive lifestyle that was supposed to emulate and look the way Jesus looked, right? This distinctive lifestyle of hearing God as daily bread, So Isaiah 50, 4 through 7 is what it is. Isaiah 50, 4 through 7. Because Jesus practiced, what, what, it, what Isaiah is prophesying is that Jesus practiced what he preached. All right? Here's what it looked like. So, verse 4. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue. This is Jesus speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Okay? So Jesus was able to speak the word that sustained those that were weary, tired, struggling. Now the question right after that is, is and my question was, is, well, how did those abilities come to him? And I knew it was your question. And here's how, here's how it is. He awakens me. He's talking about the Father. The Father awakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. That was the secret that Jesus had, right? That God woke him up every morning. Every morning he heard the Father's voice speaking, right? The Father's voice was guiding him. It was given direction. It was given instruction. And it was giving him strength for the day. Well, let's keep going. Isaiah goes on in verse 5. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I love this. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. And then the clear, very clear prophetic picture of Jesus in verse 6. I have offered my back to those who beat me my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. The, we asked the question, why was Jesus willing to go through all that he went through, right? And my question was, is how was he able to? How did he receive the strength and Isaiah 50, 4 through 7, tells us where he got his strength. Hearing the voice of the Lord, hearing God awaken him and start his day, hearing God say, I'm giving you instructions, and they will bring strength to you. All right, let's go on. Isaiah keeps going in verse 7. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, 
and I know I will not be put to shame. Jesus begins each day listening to the Father. I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to have the worship team come get in place. So why do I read this? What, what, what are we going to, where, where are the things that I apply to my life in order to, are you just saying I just need to hear his voice? Yes and no. I'm going to give you five things, okay? Because because he heard the voice of the Lord, he heard his father's voice first thing in the morning, here are the results that followed that. This is what he received by listening to the Father every day. Jesus had words of encouragement for others. He received words of encouragement for others. Number two, Jesus received personal direction each day for himself. If you want direction, it comes from the voice of the Lord for you. Number three, Jesus received obedience. Hearing the Father's voice produces obedience. You're fighting your flesh in place. You're trying to, like, I don't want to sin. I don't want to operate that way. I don't want to say those things. I want to, you know, we, you know, one of the things we got to honor Frank with was the understanding that he operated in all the fruits of the Spirit. He did it. And I had to say to myself, I'm still maturing because there's some areas I need to work on, and the only way I can work on them is by hearing the voice of the Father. That's where the obedience comes from. Number four, Jesus received strength to go through all he had to go through. The reality is, is, he needed more than human strength. You know, there are a lot of things we go through that we need more than human strength. We need supernatural strength. And we receive that. Jesus received that through hearing the Father's voice. And number five, Jesus received determination. He said, I have set my face like a flint. In other words, meaning I haven't turned back. I'm not turning back. I'm able to, to push forward. My face, not hardened like a stone, but it can handle the wind that comes against it. And I'm not giving up. I'm not turning back. I'm not walking away. Do you know that that's the one thing that the enemy wants to do? The enemy wants to make sure that you're not listening to the Father so that when things get a little bit tough, you're, you're not able to handle. Your face isn't like flinch. You can't keep moving forward, and you turn, and you run, and you go, I'm out. I'm done. That's, that's what happens. All of this came to Jesus through hearing the Father's voice. And it'll do the same for you and me. It's important. So we need to, we need, you need, I need to cultivate the habit of hearing the Father's voice, letting the Lord wake us up. Now, I know that's a tough one because uh, some of you set seven alarms. And the last one is the one that says, this is serious. You are now late, and you're going to have to scramble. Hurry up. <laughs> if I'm stepping on your toes, it's not me. It's the Lord. He wants time with you. And, and you, you have to say, Lord, I'm going to give you some time. Okay? Now, hear me out. I'm not saying if you get out of bed and you haven't heard the Father's voice, you're, you're, you're not going to succeed. What I'm saying is, is if it's not early in the morning, if it's not at the beginning of your day somewhere, and you wait till the end of the day to go, well, I have to do my devotions, I need to read the Word, I need to get caught up, you've missed it. He wanted to talk to you all day long. He, he wanted to speak all day long. He doesn't want you to just read the Word. He wants you to talk to him, read the word, 
and let him continue to talk to you all day long. That is a dis distinctive lifestyle that is different than everybody else. It doesn't look like the rest of the world. It is distinct, and it's full of peace. It's full of joy. It's full of hope, and it bears fruit. Would you close your eyes? And I would have you ask yourself, Lord, what changes do I need to make so that I can experience all five of those things? What adjustments do I need to make so that I can have a di distinctive lifestyle like Jesus did? You, you've given me the answer. You've given me direction. You've, you've given me the, the how. But now I have to apply it to my life. I'm the one that has to say, the buck stops here. This is the change I make. If Jesus needed daily bread, I need daily bread. And my spirit, man, is desperate to hear the voice of the Father. And I'm the only thing that keeps that from happening. Check, check, check. There we go. We do have a song that we're going to do, but I just want to take a minute and allow the Holy Spirit to speak. So we're just going to sit for a minute. And um, I think it's that part of that invitation to get beyond our comfort zones and walk in places that we haven't been before. And so if it feels a little bit uncomfortable for you to sit, then that's okay. Just stretch yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to speak this morning.
Jesus. Thank you for your voice that is always speaking. Thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us, and that you are walking and leading and guiding through every day and every moment. I just thank you that you are an everyday God, that you don't just show up on Sunday mornings when we sing songs and celebrate God, but that you are walking in with in every moment with us, Jesus. I thank you for the testimonies in the room of lives impacted and changed and lives that have been lived in your presence, Jesus.
And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God One more time, all my life And all my life you You have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Yes, Jesus, we just declare your goodness in this room this morning Father, it's your... Oh, gosh, sorry It's your character, it's your nature, it's who you are. And we just say thank you for that this morning, God. We love you and we trust you and we ask that you would walk with us and remind us of this goodness all as we go throughout this week. Father, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you guys next week.